this video we're going to look at the scalar product or dot product for vectors so the scalar product of two vectors a and b is defined as a product of the magnitude of the two vectors multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the two vectors and i those this word between is very important so these are vectors vector a and you say dot vector b so that's your dot product or your vector or your scalar product is equal to the modules of a times the modules of b times cos of theta where theta is the angle between the two vectors a and b so the angle between refers to the direction so i'm going to do a few examples here of what this could look like here you've got your one of your vectors and your other vector and you can see their directions indicated by the arrows and that's the angle theta if i do this slightly differently if i have them going in to each other the case it's not just as obvious maybe where the uh where the angle theta would be so if i continue those those lines on along you can see that would be the angle between them there would be theta so it would be this angle here would be theta okay another couple here if you have one going in like this and then a horizontal one again it's not too obvious where the angles would be so i'm going to continue this one on along and this would be theta in here so this would be the angle between the two things and the last one if i have one of my vectors going this way and the other vector going this way if i continue this one along you can see the angle between them is actually from here to here so that's where your theta is in this case okay uh, it says here note if theta is acute the scalar product will be positive that's just because cos of an acute angle is always a positive whereas if theta is obtuse the scalar product would be negative and again that's just because cos theta is negative right another very helpful thing we'll see why in a second uh, a easy way of doing this is if you have your a is equal to a1 a2 a3 and b is equal to b1 b2 b3 now what i mean by that that you could write that as uh slightly differently uh or it could be a is equal to a1i plus a2j plus a3k and your b then would be equal to so these are just these in column form and i'm, I'm writing them out just a longer clunkier way i suppose b1i plus b2j plus b3k so how you can get your scalar product or your dot product much easier way than doing what i've just done up above is to just it's a product of the coefficients of the i's plus the product of the coefficient of the j's plus the product of the coefficient of the k's and we'll see why this is very very uh, very important for us to understand okay so why it is important here is hence the angle between the two vectors can be calculated so uh remember what your formula was i'll be rubbing this out in a second your formula was uh, a dot b is equal to modules of a modules of b times cos of the angle between them so if you want to find cos you could do your a dot b divided by all of this and would give you the cos so that's where this b formula uh, comes from okay we're going to look at a couple of a few things here which are very important about your scalar product and it really is helpful for you to learn these okay this first one is a scalar product of two perpendicular vectors is zero perpendicular remember means they go at they're at right angles to each other and it's zero because cos the angle if they're at right angles to each other the angle between them is 90 degrees and cos of 90 is zero so that means your a dot b which we did earlier on was equal to modules a modules b cos theta that's going to be cos of the cos of 90 which is zero so that means your a dot b is going to be zero okay so if you were to prove, ask to prove two vectors are perpendicular, just do their dot product or their uh, scalar product, and you'll see that you'll get zero, hence they're perpendicular. Okay, the order does not matter, so it's commutative, which means uh, just like mul multiplication is, is commutative, six times seven is the same as seven times six, and here a dot b is exactly the same as b dot a. Okay, a nice wee result here which help, will help us um, as well a dot a is the same as modulus of a times modulus of a times cos of zero because the angle between two things which are the same is going to be zero and cos of zero is one so it's just modulus of a squared and also this is just like if you multiply it out uh what we'll, we'll do i'll do uh sorry uh set like seven upon x plus one would be equal to seven times the x plus seven times the one so it'll be seven x 
plus 7. So basically it just follows the same pattern as well. So a plus b of dot c is equal to a dot c at plus b dot c. So just as you would have expected really. So that's quite, uh, quite handy. Okay, we're going to go on and look at a couple of examples here. Okay, first example says find the angle between the two vectors. First one is i plus j plus 2k. Second one is 2i minus j plus k. So I'm going to just say let, I'm going to say let uh, a equal the i plus the j plus 2k. And I'm going to let my b equal the other one, which is 2i minus j plus k. So first thing I'm going to do is find my modules of A. So modules A is equal to, uh, we've got three things here. So it's going to be equal to the square root of the coefficient of the x plus the square root of the coefficient of the y plus the square root of the coefficient, uh, sorry, square root of the coefficient of the i squared plus the coefficient of the j squared plus the co uh, coefficient of the k squared. So it is going to be equal to the square root of and I'll just write that in as 1 plus 1 plus 4, which is root 6. Don't get that as a decimal or tidy it up any. Leave it. The gap is fine. Uh, your modulus of b is going to be equal to, again, the square root of the coefficient of the i squared, which is 4, coefficient of the j squared, which is 1, coefficient of the k squared, which is 1, which is root 6. Okay, uh, we've got your modulus of a and your modulus of b. We're also going to find out what a dot b is and we'll see why this all, all in, the, uh, in a minute okay to do this the best way to do it is the easiest way of getting your dot product or your scalar product is to do add the products of the i's to the products of the j's to the products of the k's and that's the coefficients there so the, pro the coefficients of the i's are uh, one and two so one plus two one times two that's my product of my coefficient of the i's my product of the coefficient of the j's is one times minus one Product of the coefficient of the k's is 2 times 1, which is going to be 2 minus 1 plus 2. 2 minus 1 plus 2 is going to be 3. Okay, why we're doing all this is because a dot b is equal to modules of a, modules of b times cos of theta. So fill this in like it's an equation. We know this bit. The a dot b bit we now know is equal to 3. The modules of a we know is root 6. Modules B is also root 6, and we're trying to find cos theta. So fill in what we know, and we're good to go. So A dot B was 3. Root, oh, sorry, modules of A was root 6. Modules of B was also root 6, and cos theta is what we're trying to find. So that's 3 is equal to root 6 times root 6 is 6. Cos theta, it's 3 divided by 6, divide across by that 6, and you'll get a half. So a half is equal to cos theta. You should know what theta is. Uh, cos uh, theta is equal to cos to the minus 1 of a half. If you've forgotten, just do that in your calculator. And cos of 60 gives you half, so cos to the minus 1 of a half is 60 degrees. Okay, great example. This one is really test your understanding. Do you really know your notes well? It says, given that two vectors a, and it's a is 3t plus 1 upon i, plus j minus k and b, which is t plus 3 upon i plus 3j minus 2k are perpendicular, find the possible values of t. Okay, you need to know your notes and know that if two vectors are perpendicular, that means that their dot product or their scalar product is zero. So we'll write that in first of all. Uh, if uh, perpendicular, Theta is equal to 90 degrees, i.e. cos theta equals 0, i.e. a dot b is equal to 0. Now, I'm doing more than I need to here, really. It's just for the explanation for your notes. But I would really just say, if perpendicular, uh, a, a dot b equals 0 is what I would do in an exam properly. So we'll just go through that and we'll work out what that means. We'll find out what our a dot b is. So a dot b, product of your coefficients of your i's is going to be, we'll do it out the long way, we'll not skip anything. That's going to be 3t plus 1 upon t plus 3 plus the coefficients of the j's, which is just 1 times 3 plus the coefficients of the k's, which is minus 1 times minus 2 
and let's just crack on with this and multiply this all out. Well, expanding out that first bracket, you're going to get 3t squared plus 9t plus another t, so it's going to be 10t, and then plus 3, and then plus another 3, and then plus another 2 is equal to 3t squared plus 10t plus 8. Okay, we know, or we should know, that that's equal to 0, so we're just going to say put 3t squared plus 10t plus 8 equal to 0. And then we should go ahead and factorize this. So uh, so here the sum is 10. So we'll just do some product method to do this. Sum is 10. Product is 24. So the two numbers which are going to uh, add to give 10 and multiply to give 24 are going to be 4 and 6. So we can rearrange this as 3t squared plus 4t plus 6t plus 8 is equal to 0. Factorize the first two terms completely. The only thing that comes outside is t. So it's t upon 3t plus 4. Factorize the last two terms completely. The only thing that comes outside is 2, leaving you 2 upon 3t plus 4. That's equal to 0. So 3t plus 4 upon t plus 2 is equal to 0. So you're left that 3t plus 4 is equal to 0, which means t is equal to minus 4 over 3 or t is equal to minus 2. Okay, last example is a bit strange. It says, show that triangle ABC is a right angle triangle and find the other two angles, given that A is a point 5, 3, 2, and B is a point 2, minus 1, 3, and C is a point 7, minus 3, 10. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the direction vectors or uh, displacement vectors. So the vector from A to B, first of all, that's B minus A, remember? And I'm going to write these as column vectors because it will save me an awful lot of time. That's going to be minus 3, minus 4, 1. You can check my work out later on. A to C, that's going to be C minus A. And as a column vector, that's going to be 2, minus 6, 8. And the last one is B to C. And that's going to be equal to, oh, I forgot to do that. The step, uh, sorry. Well, we know what that is, and anyway, that's going to be our uh, that's going to be our c minus b, which is going to be five minus two and seven. Okay, so we've got all that. We also need to find the lengths of these things. So modulus of a b then is going to be equal to so it's a minus three squared gives you nine, minus four squared gives you sixteen, one squared gives you one. Square root of all that, which is just going to be root. Of 26. Don't work that out as a decimal, leave it as, as it is, it's fine. Modulus of AC. Uh, modulus of AC is going to be equal to the 2 squared, which is 4. Uh, sorry, that's a mess there. Uh, 2 squared, which is 4. Uh, 6 squared, which is 36. 8 squared, which is 64. And the square root of all that, so that was your, I'll write that again to make it a wee bit clear. Modulus of AC is equal to root of 100. And four, and your modulus of BC. It's the square root of the five squared, which is twenty-five. The two squared, which is four. The seven squared, which is forty-nine, which is going to be equal to the root of seventy-eight. Okay. Uh, we could at this point uh, show this is a right-angled triangle, uh, but we're just going to. Oh, sorry. Uh, we could at this point draw this show that this is a right angle triangle. We, uh, we can see clearly here that uh, 104 squared is going to be equal to the root of 104 squared is going to be equal to these two. So we're just going to show it's a right angle triangle. We will do that now. So we're going to draw it, but we don't really need to. Uh, just say, uh, IE and AC all squared equals 104. And also, so just know you can clearly see if you leave it in this form, you can clearly see the root of 104 is the biggest of the three of the, the lengths here. So you know it's going to be the hypotenuse. So uh, AC all squared is equal to 104. And then we'll just do AB squared plus uh, 
well, plus BC squared is going to be equal to 26 plus 78, which equal to 104. So therefore, AC squared is equal to AB squared plus BC squared. Therefore, right angle triangle. Okay, so I've done that bit. Sorry about the mess there. Okay, so we've got to, we've got to find the other angles. So I'm going to find um, my a to b dot a to c, and it's going to be equal to modulus of a b times a c times cos of theta. And my we'll do the left hand side of this a to b dot a to c. Remember that's a product products. I'm oh, sorry, the sum of the products of the coefficient of the i's, the coefficient of the j's, and the coefficient of the k's. So you've got your a, b, and your a, c here. So minus 3 times 2 is going to be minus 6. And then minus 4 times minus 6 is going to be plus 24. And 1 times 8 is going to be 8. So that's my uh, a, b dot a, c. And then my modulus of a, b, we had written that down. It was root of 26. My modulus of a, c was 104. And then that's times cos theta. We better work it out here uh, to give you a half is equal to cos theta. Therefore, the theta here is equal to 60 degrees. Okay, uh, it's not too obvious really where the triangle is going to be. Uh, probably if I had drawn this out as I was going to say I was going to do earlier on, it would have made this easier for me to see. So I'm just going to go on. Um, if I find my other angle, this next angle, if I find it to be 90 degrees, then I can still work out the three angles on a triangle. I can still work out what the other two angles, uh, the other angles, going to be. So it's not a big deal. Uh, very easy, uh, uh, very easy for me to do. So I'm going to this time look at AB dot BC. So it is going to be equal to. Uh, we already know, of course, that the this other angle is 90 uh, because it's a right angle. So you know it's 30. But I think we do need a wee bit of working out to show. So we'll do AB dot BC is equal to modulus of AB modulus of BC times cos of theta. And if you work this one out, it's going to be minus 15 plus 8 plus 7 is equal to root of 26 times root of 78 times cos of theta. That is 0 over here is equal to then cos theta. That means theta is equal to 90 degrees. Uh, so we'll just say, so other angle, three angles and triangle add up to 180 degrees. The other angle is 180 minus 90 minus 60, uh, which is 30 degrees. So your answer, the three angles are 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. Okay, well, you could argue, and to be honest, you, I would imagine you still get the marks. You've already shown that's a right angle triangle because here it satisfies Pythagoras theorem. Uh, you've found out one of the other angles is 60 degrees. So you know one of the angles from Pythagoras has to be 90. Then the other angle 60, and the other angle then you could skip this out. This was just to show that one of them was 90 degrees. You could have gone on and done. Uh, we have done AB dot AC. If I had done BC dot AC, then I would have found 30 degrees. So you can see there's sort of loads of ways of doing it. I've maybe done more work than necessary here, but sure. Okay, uh, the questions you can do then, understand the pure mass, exercise 2C, a whole pile of questions there, and also exercise 17A, and a whole pile of questions there.